My name is Lauren McBurnett. Today I'm going to tell you about complex systems thinking skills. People don't tend to think in terms of complex systems, and that's why we want to use games to teach them. So what I'm working on is developing games that change the way people think about critical infrastructure systems because we want people to think about infrastructure the right way. Human intuition only gets us so far. Failure doesn't just occur out of nowhere. It actually develops slowly, gradually, with its own logic. The hydropower generation in California was reduced as a result of the, pow of the severe drought conditions. So with less water, you have reduced inflow from the stream, and with in reduced flow going through, you have reduced generation capacity for hydropower systems, which drives up the power demand that's being met for coal. But with that same depletion of water and higher temperatures, the coal power plant is less efficient. So you have a feedback loop where you have a higher demand for water that's the result of having less water to begin with. And my work is demonstrating these feedback loops, interdependencies, nonlinearity, and stochasticity that we refer to as complex system thinking skills. Specifically, we want to teach people four different complex systems thinking skills. One being interdependencies. Systems interact with each other and their variables uh, depend on one another. And the next characteristic we want to look for is feedback loops. Feedback loops are where the variables not just affect one another, but they feed back into the system and really affect the initial variable as well. A time lag where humans have a difficult time understanding a feedback loop because the information from the feedback they're getting comes back so slow that they don't understand the initial variable that affected the others. Complex systems are nonlinear, so the cause-effect relationships are not always the same. The input might produce this output, and then the next time around that same input might produce a much larger or smaller output. The last trait we want people to understand is stochasticity. Um, this is the degree of randomness in your system. The system itself might generate unexpected results. If we're going to change the way people think about complex systems, first we have to understand how people think. We learned from Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow that people think given two different systems of thought. System one, which is known for its fast and automatic responses, and system two, which is more slow and methodical. If I asked you to solve 247 times 64, you'd have to slow down and think about it, and maybe even write it out. But if I ask you two plus two, you're going to rattle off the answer four. And that would be using system one, which is your automatic response. It's what you already just know without even knowing how you know it. So when we want to change the way people think about infrastructure, we have to get it to a point where it's automatic so they just understand uh, on a deeper level. The way that you can get something to be an automatic uh, process for someone is through practice. It's like riding a bike. You have to do it over and over and over. Knowing how people think, we can understand how they learn. People think through systems one and two, but they learn through the slow and deliberate process of system two. We have to teach in a fashion that allows them to develop the skills slowly where they can understand them, and then we can transition to the repeated practice through the literature of Kolb's learning cycle. We understand that people learn in four different ways. First, you have abstraction. This is your conceptual level knowledge of content. Then, people work through an experimentation process. Experiment Experimenting is where you start to get a grip on doing things, but it's not till experience that you're embedded in a real world context of that information that you're acquiring. Lastly, we have reflection. Reflection is where you can go back and uh, evaluate the different uh, quadrants of the Kolb learning cycle. So using games, we can reinforce the experiencing and the reflecting components of the Kolb learning cycle to uh, help people learn complex systems thinking skills. Games fall in this experiencing genre that doesn't happen in an academic environment, generically speaking, because people don't get to actually make decisions in the real world in their practicing level. You can't let them experiment with real world decisions because there could be real world consequences. We want people to have this uh, practice though and understand intuitively how complex infrastructure systems work because we want that to relate back to the resilience of infrastructure systems. In the game where they're making decisions and understanding these skills so that they will transition from using systems to 
uh, which is slow and deliberate, two, understanding feedback loop stochasticity, nonlinearity, and interdependencies using their system one, which is more automatic. So practice, practice, practice is how we're gonna get them there. And games are a great mechanism for allowing people to practice. Let me introduce the LA Water Game. The LA Water Game starts with the goal of managing the LA Water Infrastructure System. So as time has progressed, Los Angeles County has really struggled with their pipe water distribution network uh, exploding in the streets. And you might stop and wonder, why if in the 21st century do we have pipes exploding in the streets? It's not a technical problem. Engineers know how to build pipes, but when you embed the pipe network in a complex system that involves uh, people, decision makers, uh, the technical component, as well as public financing and public opinion, it becomes very difficult to manage this complex system, especially when people don't understand complex systems thinking skills. So we embed students in the experience of playing out the role of the LA Water Manager. First, we'll take all the participants into the decision theater. Then we divide participants into three groups. The groups are assigned team one, two, three. Team one has the first job of managing the LA Water Distribution System for the first 25 years, or until they're fired from the job. Team two is the second generation. So when the team one first starts playing out, team two is not born yet and neither is team three. The first parameter they're in charge of is the quality of the system. The second parameter is the public opinion. Because they are a publicly elected official, if their public opinion drops too low, they will lose their job. Lastly, we have the funding. The rate payers of uh, rate is set by the LA Water Manager. So every five years, the LA Water Manager gets to make two decisions. The first decision they make is to decide how much they want to spend on the, in terms of millions of dollars on maintaining the quality of their system. The second decision that they'll make is how much they want to increase, decrease, or even just maintain the rate of the rate payers. A few key learning objectives that students experience in the LA Water game is understanding feedback loops as well as nonlinearity and stochasticity. Feedback loops are experienced through seeing how quality of the system affects the public opinion and how the public opinion affects the funding and vice versa. As the time progresses through the game, it becomes harder or more difficult to finance the infrastructure depending on how you interacted with that feedback loop. Secondly, students learn nonlinearity. One case example of nonlinearity in the game is the relationship with quality of the system over time. Initially, the quality of the system is brand new, and so it's very easy to maintain. However, as time goes on, uh, the same amount of time, five years passing, can correspond to a much larger gap uh, drop in the quality of the system. Stochasticity is learned through how the emergency breaks occur in the LA water distribution system. So as time progresses, if the quality drops, you'll see on a random, uh, on a semi-random basis, the emergency breaks increasing with respect to the quality of the system.